I is best. Okay. All right, everyone. So I'm here with Evan Coford. He is a mentee of mine, and I'm just going to let him go ahead and tell him his experience with me and just in general. So Evan, I just give a little background on you and then kind of where you were before the mentorship as well. Yeah. So really, um, I'm 16 year old, 16 years old right now. And when I started, it was back in like February, I think. And before that, I just kept, you know, for like a year, I think I just kept thinking about how I wanted to start my own agency. But I never really went into it, like, and never took that, that action I needed to get there. and never really knew what I had to do to get there. And, um, I, to be honest, I didn't have much money to start off with. And I was just looking for mentors to help me out. And I honestly, everybody out there just looked like such a scam with all these courses and everything and nothing was really legit. And then one day, um, actually through some guy's story, I found out who Nicholas was and I DM'd him, we hopped on the call and I started work with him there. But really when I worked with him, I mean, before I did, I had no systems in place. I had no clue to do with outreach, no clue how to really run meetings, no clue how to get results. And when I started working with Nick, there was a good strategy there and everything was just in place and really helped me get to the next level and understand what I had to do to get there. Awesome. Cool. And then, so once we started talking and then once we, we started going through everything, because obviously we, we moved at a one-on-one -on -one kind of basis and so you got stuff, but you couldn't, you could go at your own pace, but you couldn't in a sense, mm -hmm. I guess, what was something really big that I guess you were looking forward to learning, but right when we started and then what's, I guess the big thing that you did learn, maybe it was the same thing or maybe it was something different that you thought, what was something really big that you learned that you feel helped you out a lot, whether it was the thing you thought you needed when you came in or it's something different now. Yeah. So really, um, I think a big thing I didn't really understand before is consistency. Like I thought I could just, uh, before I started working with you, I thought I could just send out like 15 cold emails and get three clients or something. And that, that's just not how it is. Yeah. Uh, you have to add value. You have to be consistent with everything. And, uh, when, when you showed me and helped me out with outreach, it really showed me that I can put a strategy to it. And if I'm consistent, I'll get results. And then on top of that, uh, I had no clue to get results either. And now starting with a few people, I really like have strategies in there and a process, a step-by-step -step process on how to take the next level and how to deliver as promised on everything. Cool. Awesome. And then, so how many, you can kind of break down, I guess, how many clients you currently have, if you want to, how much they're paying you. And then also, um, how you got them and then where you want to move forward with not just them, but maybe anyone else in general. Yeah. So really, um, I have about, I have three right now and they're all e-commerce clients. Now, a while back, I tried to try to work with dentists. It just didn't work out. It wasn't the right niche for me. So I had to pivot a bit, but e-commerce, I like, I, I really like it. I'm really interested in it and it's really fun. Um, the first guy, uh, I reached out to him through cool DMs on Instagram. The second guy was the same thing. The third guy is through a Facebook group. Uh, I sent out a value post and he responded. We hopped on a call and I found I could help him out with what he wanted. And really what we're doing, uh, one of the guys already has a super big audience we can work with. We're just working on bringing more sales right now. We don't got a funnel for that. Uh, the second guy, he's sort of a beginner. We're looking on finding the right products to use and then scaling it from there and seeing what to do. The third guy's a beginner too. He's just getting some new products and we're starting to get sales from, which is really great. And we're just looking to take him step by step to the next level. And help them with predictable processes to really help them scale and get to their goals. Awesome. And then um, going back, backtracking on your niche a little bit. So you said you started with dentists, obviously, and you got some some traction there. You got some meetings. You got some solid experience when it comes to meetings, from from what I remember. And correct me if I'm wrong. But then um, with pivoting to e-commerce, do you feel like that was a really good decision that you made? Um, and do you feel like this is the niche you really want to stick with, or? Um, yeah, I mean, just, just that. Yeah, yeah. So really, uh, I, I think it's important to say this for anybody that's listening. The reason I got into dentistry is because I saw everybody else doing it now, just chasing the money. And I thought the grass would be green on the other side. And it just, it just wasn't. And I was just like chasing a dream that I couldn't have and really wasn't chasing a reality. And so w once I realized that, I just, you know, stopped wasting my time on it. And I tried to find something I actually like. In e-commerce, I just like, I just love the idea of it. And it's, it's super interesting to me. So. I think it's a great idea to transition to it because now I really am more passionate about what I do with my outreach and with driving results and everything. It's just a lot more fun. It makes the whole process a lot better. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. And then um, how do you feel? I, I guess so you said I helped you with some specific, you didn't have any systems in place and whatnot in terms of outreach and meetings and whatnot. You said outreach helped a lot. And you said that was a really big one that you learned. 
Um, what did you feel about the whole sales side of things? How did you feel maybe like your first call compared to maybe your most recent call or your sales meeting that you've had? And I know it's a big transition for everyone, but just in general, that whole sales process, how, how did you adapt to it? How did you like it? And just that whole kind of story with that. Yeah, yeah. so uh, really in my first, I want to say my first sales call and how it began, I've always been pretty confident with like all, all that kind of stuff. And I've only really gotten one sales call before starting work with Nick. On that, I was super nervous, had no clue what to do. But then my first one, I, I, I had the scripts. I, I knew what to do and I felt confident that I could take him through the process and get a close out of him. And the first guy I'm trying to remember, the first person I didn't close, but I still felt super confident, super in control. We just weren't a good fit. The yeah. second guy uh, was a dentist. I actually closed. And from there, I started to really understand the process there. And moving on, I feel much more confident now. I feel super in control and I feel more of like, I, I know what I'm doing now. For sure. Back, back when I began, um, I, I, can, I can say this is sort of a big tip for anybody watching. The, the, this whole sales meeting, a lot of people think the purpose of it is just to sell someone and get money. It's not. The purpose is to diagnose them and help them out. And once I really understood that, it became a whole lot easier. And it's really nothing to get nervous about. It's just a conversation with somebody about how you can help them out. And if you can help them out, it's great. You guys can work together. And if not, you guys are a good fit. But yeah. yeah. 100%. Awesome. No, for sure. You hit the nail on the head. Um, so then with the sales, moving on from sales, how did you feel about, so I know you maybe don't do it. Well, actually you do. How did you feel about kind of the steps afterwards? So obviously onboarding is a very important part. Um, I feel a lot of you guys like my biggest, my biggest mistake I probably made in terms of like clients and client management is setting expectations. And that's what the onboarding does. I guess what did you feel about that? And then the back end of things, how did you feel about the process of delivering results? I know you touched on it a little bit, but if you want to add anything else there, go for it. Yeah. So really like the onboarding and everything. Um, I, I like the whole process because uh, it just seems a lot more like professional, I guess you could say. Because a lot of people out there, a lot of marketers don't have anything like any certain systems in place like this. They just go and try to wing everything without getting certain information. And to be honest, uh, in, order to the pro in order to deliver the proper results, you need like certain things you have to get. And it's good that you can all do it in one spot and all, all in one call because it's just a lot more professional. Everybody understands what's going on. You can set expectations so they know what's coming on. And <clears throat> they know it's a professional relationship and it's not just you guys are just friends. So that whole thing, I think it's really great. And then after that, delivering results. Um, to be honest, a lot of people like overcomplicate Facebook ads. It's not that complicated. All you have to do is, I, I mean, there's certain steps to get there. And you just have to simplify it as much as possible. Because once you can simplify it and just get the right inputs, get the right outputs, I mean, it's a whole lot easier. And the results will come easy. Yep, 100%. Um, so I don't have anything else. I, I mean, you really explained a lot there, and that helps a lot. Do you have anything, I guess, you want to say in general, whether it's about the mentorship, whether it's about me, whether it's about maybe things that you've learned, whether for me or just in general from like what you've been doing um, and maybe any other like tips and advice from just in general that you want to say, you want to touch on. Yeah. So I mean, there's a few things. One is consistency. Consistency. And that's, that's a big thing right here. A lot of people are like all over the place with what they do and all over the place with their strategies. I mean, there's no magic pill or like, golden bullet, I guess you could say, to really scale and start making money. It's just hard work, consistency, and of course, smart work too. You got to test what you're doing. You got to see what's working, what's not, and you got to optimize for everything. On top of that, excuses is a big thing. A lot of people give excuses for themselves to not do things. And this was a big thing with me earlier because I'm only 16 right now. I knew absolutely nothing. I mean, I'm not even 18, so I can't legally do a lot of things. But um, there's always a way to get over the bridge and there's always a way to their side. And you can see that with anybody, really. I mean, you got to you gotta find ways to get your goals if you really want it bad enough. And that was another thing I was going to say. You really, in order to get to your goals, you have to want it bad enough. A lot of people say they want this. They say they want to scale this six-figure agency. They say they want to, you know, reach their goals and do all this. But at the end of the day, like, their action doesn't match up with it. If you really want it bad enough, your action has to match up. You have to be doing the outreach. You have to be doing the sales calls. You have to be consistent. You have to be sacrificing things in order to get there. And you just have to be doing all that in order to reach your goals. Yeah, hundred percent. That's awesome. Yeah, totally. Um, I don't think of anything else. Um, is there anything else in general you want to add? Oh, I'll, actually, before that, before we end it off, what do you feel about the? So right at the beginning, and I should have touched on this in the beginning, but right in the beginning, you said before talking to me, you 
and, and a lot of people are in the same situation. Like they've seen courses, they've seen these other, other things, whatever they are. How did you feel about the kind of structure that, that I've had? Do you like it? Do you feel like it's been helping? And maybe even if there's some bad things you feel like there could be improved on, what, what do you think about that whole thing? Yeah. So I honestly really like the structure of it. It's much better than I want to say just some like video course. Cause we get one-on-one -on -one calls with you. And I, I think that helps me a lot, a lot more than just say some video from a course or a YouTube video. Cause if I have any questions or to clarify anything or anything else like that, I can just talk to you. But on top of that, it's not just the information. It's sort of, I guess the accountability. Cause when I talk to you, it's much different than, you know, watching a course. Like I said, there's actually a person on the other side. It's there and listening to you. And I want to say if you aren't being consistent and you aren't actually being held accountable for what you're doing, you could sort of like, you know, you, you could sort of disappoint him and you, you got to be consistent and stuff because, you know, and like I'm saying, there's a, there's a person on the other side and with him there, it just motivates you to get to the next level and really he holds you accountable and it really just, yeah, I'm trying to put it in the right words. It really just it adds more of a human aspect to it because it's not just like someone selling you course. It's somebody actually there to help you out. When somebody's actually there to help you out, you want to do better and you want to make them proud. And like, you know, sort of, sort of that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Cool. Evan, that that's awesome. That's really, really sweet. Um, how, how do you feel when, when did you get it? Cause I'm sure some people have been thinking about this. I mean, you're 16. So have you gotten any kickback from that or have people asked you about your age or have you, have you found that like, obviously, there may have been an obstacle there, but it doesn't matter. Like yeah. you said, if you want it bad enough, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But have you seen anything like that? Just curious. And I'm sure other people are curious too that you're 16. <laughs> yeah. So really uh, back in dentistry, um, long story short, I had a few meetings and like closed a few people, but it fell apart. But one of the guys I was in the meeting with, uh, I reached out to him through Facebook Messenger and he brought me in. We were talking and stuff. And after he was like, like oh my God, I can't believe I'm paying a 16 year old this money. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I was like when I was talking to him, I'm like yeah why are you really bringing me in and all this and stuff and he's like to be honest you know you're like a 16 year old and it just seems like you'll be a whiz with all the internet stuff and all that and then there's another guy he was one of the honestly one of the biggest dental like practices in my area yeah. he had like eight seven or eight locations he's pretty big and I was talking to him and he's just called like a young hustler I mean I, I took the whole situation so wrong because I thought it was a compliment but I think it, he sort of gave me some kickback there. You know, it's really just helped me learn a lot. And like in e-commerce too, a lot of people respect you for that. Cause a lot of e-commerce people are like younger. When I tell them I'm 16, they're like, oh yeah, all this, all this internet money type stuff. And they just respect it more than just some like, honestly, 27 year old guy that's coming there. Cause yeah. they sort of respect the hustle more Yeah. And, and all that kind of stuff. But really being 16 doesn't matter. It just matters how bad you want it and how much work you put in and really how consistent you are with everything. And, just everything I've been saying. For sure. Totally. Um, is there anything else you want to add about me, the mentorship, any tips? I mean, I'll read this again, but anything in general that you want to add before we, before we get going? Yeah. So, I mean, one final thing I guess I could say is uh, no matter how much information you get, it doesn't matter if you don't take action and don't do anything with it, whether it's with Forex or with mixed mentorship or anything else. I mean, you can learn as much as you want, but if you don't put into practice and don't actually try to do it yourself, you won't get results. Yeah. A lot of people say they want it, like I'm saying, they say they want it bad enough, but at the end of the day, they, their action doesn't match up with it. And if you really want it bad enough, it'll show in the work you do, it'll show with what you do. Like Nick can give you all the stuff you need. He can give you all the strategies, all the scripts, all that. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to you and what you're willing to do to get to the next level. It requires sacrifice, it requires hard work, but if you're willing to do that, you can get to the next level. For sure. Totally. And then, um, yeah, you already, you already touched on it. Maybe. Yeah. You already touched on it. Um, okay. Awesome. No, awesome, man. Um, that's great. I'll leave your information below this video. So if anyone wants to reach out to you, they're, they're glad to do that. You guys can reach out to Evan. You guys can reach out to me. Um, you can check out, I had another interview with Xavier Sanchez. He's actually one of my first mentees. You guys can check that out as well. Um, I'll put that below the video as well. The link to that is you guys can check that out. But other than that, that's all from Evan, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks, Evan. I really appreciate of course, it. Of course. See you guys.